Hey everybody, welcome back to Five Boys in the Business, a podcast where we talk about our business, the family, and the many shenanigans involved. You can check us out most Mondays around 11 o'clock or so, um, and on any other podcast channels, mm -hmm. or where you find podcasts. Wherever you um, can find them. Wherever you can find them. Don't forget to check out the merch store, ASVCmerch.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. So we're here now for Monday. Happy Second Monday. Monday in January. Happy Monday. Here we go. So. Um what's on your schedule for this week to talk about this week or today whatever well every day is interesting every day we do um homeschool with calvin so that's always on um, how was your homeschool today because we're starting a little bit late with the podcast so it was good um i had to go back and do math and english with uh with uh calvin he's excited because he's almost finished with his current book his current math book that is so we only have about 20 or so lessons um and he'll be finished with that and on to fourth grade math but it's technically third grade but this particular curriculum is a bit advanced so he's excited about that um his spelling words are uh, this week end in a i i'm sorry i r e e a r a r e so the air okay so he pointed out to me he goes dad he goes there's pair these two words are the same i was like well they sound the same but they're not the same okay pair and pair <laughs> p-a-r-r means two of something p-e-a-r is a fruit <laughs> So he got a lesson what that is. Oh, that's good. And did he, uh, he, he, he understood it? He got it? Yeah. Did you give him other examples? Um, well, and it was just the spelling list. Oh, it was just the spelling list. Although okay. stare, I mean, I was like, there's stare. And stare. And bear, bear, those kinds of things. I don't want to confuse the poor guy. So today's yeah, the first day. Exactly. So he's, uh, but these words are pretty easy this week. What are and, those, uh, hominins or something? Or what are they called? Harrison? Uh, <laughs> I think they're homonyms because they sound the same, but they mean different things. I was going with homonyms. I think that's right. Homonyms. <laughs> that's a lot. That it's homonyms. I can't say that word. You can't say homonyms. Homonyms. There you go. Homonyms. There you go. There we go. Okay, so I think that's the right word. I think you're right. It's I would been, ask Norse Muddy if it's, she was. It's, if it's she been was, many years. We got people commenting about the news that dropped today. Everybody. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Listen. Lisa, breaking news from the uh, Harrison King's office here at All-Star Veterinary Clinic. We have, we, have, we have Lisa Sidner out in the uh, press conference, or out in the press pool. I'm so loud. Out in, the pre out, in, out in the press pool saying, hi, saw the video with the big news. Oh, yes. So beginning of 2021, I'm transitioning from the lead veterinarian to manager slash mentor slash make it all work and happen at an exceptional rate and level emily's always been in charge now it's just official <laughs> um, so um as the clinic's grown it's just been harder and harder to right make that happen and yeah. so um i have i'm i have um i mean right everybody does right a, a level of anxiety about it being a reflection upon your character like you know like owning something and then it oh, being a reflection that, on your character. right 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 like, and so that is a big thing for me, like feeling like I have this thing out here, meaning the clinic, I have all these people that represent it. Who's laughing at me? Lori Vacus said, Lori Vacus said, you're pregnant. No, I'm not pregnant, Lori Vacus. Very funny. That gives me a really good laugh. See, this is the problem. It's five boys in a business. That's right. You couldn't, you know. Exactly. Yeah, no. <laughs> that is pretty yeah. funny. I have to change the whole name that of the would, podcast. Lori Bacchus would be the one to notice that. That could be the possibility. That, which it is not. Definitely not. Um, so, um, anyway, back to what I was saying um, <laughs> was that it, it, I want to make sure that it's the same level of care and experience that's very important to me if my name is attached to it. Sure. And it gets really hard as you get bigger to scale stop laughing Harrison you're distracting me and um and so I think this was an important step in order to keep that from 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 it all falling apart Lori says well, I don't think it'll fall apart I think I think this is the natural progression of any person who any organization you move up and I think well, that's yeah. kind of what you're doing you're moving up into more of an admin um position I'm still seeing appointments when I you know to fill in and to be a helper and you know, yeah. because we really one of the philosophies we live by is not saying no. Sure. So then that can lead to an over volume of work. So then that's when I step in and right. they bring me off the bench. But I think that, you know, it's interesting because, you know, especially when you go from something like this, an idea on a piece of paper to what it is today, you get used to wearing every hat. Right. And, and you have to consciously tell yourself, I can't wear every hat anymore. I've got to you know delegate out and 
uh, segment, you know, the responsibility pool so that I can be more effective up here and be more of a force, a force multiplier right. and a scaler versus someone who's in the trenches. There was a great book I read years ago called Citizen Soldier, and they talked about one of the commanders who was one of um, a member of this E company, but slowly became up to like a, a battlefield command. And he said it was really hard watching his men uh, take action on the field. And his first instinct was to go in there and do it. And he goes, but I can't, I've got to stay back right. here and direct. And I think that's the challenge that most entrepreneurs have as you go to the organization that they start is to recognize when it's time to step back and um, take on that greater directive responsibility. Right. So, yeah. Lori said five biz or five boys and a girl. <laughs> oh, God. Nope. nope. <laughs> Can you imagine doing that? I just, oh, I don't God. know what I would do. It sounds like torture. The, the sleep deprivation age. would kill me. Yeah, the sleep deprivation would be great. I need to have them so I can send them back. I mean, I can. I need to have Harrison's kids <laughs> and then send them back Send them to back Harrison. home, right? Where's yeah, your then mother? You, you still can sleep at, uh, at night. No, but I'm excited. I think it's a great step. I think you're going to be great at it. You're great at everything. So, I mean, it's not a, a huge leap, but I think that you're going to be great at this. And um, I'm excited. Excited about what, what it holds going forward. Great. Glad you're excited about it. Uh, we've gotten nothing but nice comments, obviously, because our clientele are amazing um, and support and encouragement right. and from everybody. That means a lot because the last thing, again, is you don't want to disappoint someone, you sure. know. Um, and so I think that um, in order to make this transition, painstakingly hours of time have been put into selecting the right people to work at the clinic and sure. to have here and things like that. And I think that. Um, yeah, I think we've got a good group of people to move the clinic forward. Yeah, I agree. So. I agree. I think uh, I don't think your team could be any better. So I, 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 that's again why I'm hopeful. So now we can move on. No, no, no we're not moving on. No, I'm no, dead. we're not. I'm, dead. I'm going to send you a few of these comments. You can read them out loud to mom. No, <laughs> we don't need to read them out Let's get loud. Get the tissue ready, Doctor King. Oh come on! Let's not read them out loud. I'm still in the trenches. Some like doing some stuff. So there's that. Um, wow. Lisa, is it Seidner? Seidner? Yeah. Wow, exciting news. Kind of sad we won't necessarily see you when we come in. On the other hand, we already have a new favorite vet. Dr. Yeah. Dudley. See, there you go. There you go. Um, Irenic Mom says, happy for you, Emily, as this is a benchmark of amazing success. You built this from the ground up and have been client-focused since day one. Selfishly, I'll be sad to not see you and catch up with you. Hear about the boys and be blessed by your smiles. That's really good. That's Cheryl Young. That's really nice of her, too. There you go. Oh, there is. Okay. No. So, oh, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, there is. Jenny Fellows Fitness. Makes me sad for us, but excited for your practice. And we love all other docs, too. Congrats, Dr. King. Yeah, that's really nice. Everybody's so nice and supportive, like I said. And I feel like a retirement party. Good job. I know. Like, uh <laughs> Send off. <laughs> Terminal illness time. I'm still going to be stalking the hallways, that's for sure. Oh uh, gosh, um, she'll still be here. Yeah, so yeah, it's good. So there's that. Good, good, good. Okay, Harrison, you got any news for us this week? Nope. Let's talk about Calvin's combo. Let's talk about Calvin's combo. Sure, we can talk about that first. So occasionally, Calvin will get up and he'll say, "Dad, can I have McDonald's this morning for breakfast?" Occasionally. And yeah, occasionally, and it's not terribly often. It's that been, feels it's, like it's often, but well, anyway. it's probably once a month. I don't go like every week or anything. No. Okay. Um, so he gets a deluxe big breakfast platter with a hash brown. Right. With uh, so what that is is basically basically scrambled eggs, sausage, uh, biscuit, and uh, uh, pancakes. And what he does is he ditches the sausage <laughs> and the and the and the biscuit. So basically, I was like, can I just I, I should just go up there and go? Can I just have half? Right. And give me the big breakfast platter, but hold the. Right. I hold the sausage and the biscuit. So anyway, he comes back and he loves the hash browns. So he comes in one day and he goes, Dad, you have to try this combo. I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, this combo is really good. And I was like, all right, what are you talking about? And he, he takes it and he takes, of course, his hands. And he takes it, takes the his, his uh, scrambled eggs and like puts a, a piece or two on the hash brown. He goes, here, try it. I'm like, hey, do I have to? <laughs> all right. So I tried his combo. It's good, right? And I was like, it's really good. And it was good. Yeah. But anyway, so that's his combo now. He, he loves it. And he, he, he eats he, that on top of that. Yeah, he takes it, yep. you know. So. Like, you can eat that now. You're nine. Get up to, like, you know, 30, 40. Stop that. So. Yep. He so loves, he loves that. it. He he uh, he doesn't eat all. He always eats the hash brown. Um, but he'll have that occasionally. And uh, so, yeah. 
That's, that's his great. New, that's his little adventure. kind of thing. So with McDonald's. Um, this weekend we went to um, Defy, which is a trampoline park similar to like Sky Zone. Yeah. It's and a newer place. It's a. I think is it? I don't know if it is or not. Well, I took Johnny there. La- we we just got in the Camaro. So because I took Calvin and Johnny, one of his buds. And they all sat in the back seat or something. Yeah. I remember going. I remember taking them. It was really, it was really easy to use. I was really yeah. happy, you know, with everything going on with COVID, and I'm sure them trying to stay in business and da da da. I mean, they were organized. They were, um, it was good, um, and it was hilarious because I begged Johnny to go. That's the inside of Defy. Yeah. Um, and. I begged Johnny to go, and that's an example of Calvin, how he's running from one end of the facility to the other. And so I'm like, Johnny, come with us. Calvin will have so much fun playing with you. You know, ask one of your friends. So Trace came, right. and so and then Trevor wanted to go, of course. And so there's Calvin. That's what Calvin does. And then you can see – oh, wait. Oh, yeah, here's that picture of him jumping off the, the high guard. See that the, thing there, though, the green thing? We were up actually sitting upstairs on this bench, and I couldn't see where the kids were falling. These kids were doing like – Double flips. Double I'm like, flips what on earth are you landing on down there? Yeah. So, um, and uh, that's a cool place. It was, they have this like high jump that you can jump off of. And so you can jump down and land on that like, like stunt a, mat kind of thing. And so it's pretty high up there. That's um, a cool place. I mean, it was, it was neat. I, did, I thought they were a little stingy with the seating room. But yeah. In turn, I mean, during the, uh, of watching it, the kids. Well, there's just nowhere to sit. I yeah. Mean, but it's but not real right. crowded. Um, if you want something to do on the weekends, um, it's a great it's a great option. Um, we tried to go to another place, two oh, other Urban places, Air. and it was, it was just, just a mess. I went yeah. over there. We couldn't get through, and uh, their website wasn't terribly helpful in terms of what how to proceed with tickets and reservations and all that. So I ended up driving over there to check it out, and it was packed. So, yeah. but I'm sure people are looking for something to do. You can't. It's cold outside. Yeah, one of the girls at w- workout told me about Defy, and so um, Susan. So then I was like, oh, "Okay, I'll check that out." Um, show the picture of Johnny. This this is what Johnny did in his um, after. Yeah, there he is. After about forty minutes of running around. <laughs> Wait a minute. Back up. Tell Johnny's story. He had a sleepover the night before. Oh, he had he a said he went to bed at six a.m. Oh yeah, yeah, his bedtime was six a.m. He goes, like, "Yeah, well, we played ping pong. What do you call it?" Pepperoni. 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 Get two welts in You know back. about that, Harrison? Yeah. So, so what? what is the purpose of that? Of, of So pretty much you just play ping pong. And then what, uh, like, I think, like, if you end up, like, losing a round or something, you turn your, you turn around, lift your shirt up, and then they get to whack the ping pong ball you. at you. If you <laughs> no, they <laughs> wing a ball. He had, like, two welts in his back. Oh, my gosh. That's such a boy thing to do. Yeah. But so. anyway, he had fun. And those chairs are legit. They had these two chairs. You could you could like pay, and it would you know do the massage thing like for fifteen minutes or something. It was really cool. I told yeah, Emily so. if I had one of those in the basement, I don't think I'd ever leave. It um, was great. Yeah. So that's they had fun. that they yeah. So he then of course Calvin once he saw Johnny doing it, and he's like, oh, I need to sit here. So he they um, only lasted about an hour. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's good for an hour. That you can buy different ticket times like you can at at um, Sky Zones. You can do like sixty minutes, an hour and a half, and two right. hours. I think. Um, but they would have been fine with an hour. Yeah, yeah. an hour. We did like an hour and, um, an hour and 15 half, minutes. Like, yeah, I mean, they, we bought the hour and a half time, but they right. only did an hour and 15 minutes, basically. It's amazing. I look at those places and I think we couldn't have dreamt of having a place this cool growing up. I mean, there was Billy down the street that had a trampoline with no cage around it. that You'd fly right. off and break your back or whatever. That was about all, you know, the only kind of jumping. You could I don't do. think I grew up with anybody that had trampoline. Uh, I didn't either. Yeah, I knew a guy, but we, you know, but that was it. So but they were terribly dangerous back then, you know, with the no cages around them and yeah, and all that. Kind of goes with the jungle gyms over asphalt or concrete, right? <laughs> if you fall off that, you're gonna get hurt. Um and um so yeah, so that was fun. It was a fun was a, excursion, was fun especially with winter and not being able to do anything and being feeling like you're boxed inside. And I didn't think, yeah, everybody, you know, yeah, it was interesting. Good for the kids to get out and burn up some energy and stuff and oh this is our kind of going back to the uh the adventures of homeschool um let me back this up don't start that yet harry i got a backstory so calvin when he does his homeschool at the when we're doing it i always play classical music or i play something he likes relaxing music, music but he kind of goes back so i always play something to, in the background just to break up so it's not so silent and then he goes 
I don't want to do it. He goes, can I choose the music? Oh, he, goes, go, not, he goes, not Vivaldi. He goes, not because I usually play the Four Seasons. I start off with that. Vivaldi's Four Seasons. He goes, not Vivaldi, Dad. So I was like, all right, you choose. And and play because this is what he chose as he was doing his math. And so that's important, the subject he was doing. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Oh, the, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so he puts on ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing it, and he goes, "Don't that I gets it, you know." And I'm checking his math. I'm like, "You have like 90 percent of these wrong." <laughs> it's like, "No more easy, easy review, buddy." Vivaldi only. So, oh my gosh. So it's great. We, uh, so yeah, he does. He does fine. He's uh, he's doing. He does all right. It's um. He likes to have funny. something going. I seem. I feel like everybody likes to have some kind of noise in the background. Yeah. When Holden. I remember Holden though trying to homeschool Holden, and I would put that, and he. Holden's mission was to disrupt everything that we did. Either he'd try to make his brothers laugh or it was just stupid. Yeah. So, half thought to Holden. Always, uh, never a dull moment with him. So, anyway, so that's it. That's, uh, many about oh, This is, okay, so let's talk about this. This happened this weekend. Okay, so backstory on this, too. My mother, growing up, was a, a, a pretty good cook. I, she, that's being, okay, she was a really good cook. She mm-hmm. could, uh, made a lot of good things for us. And but we didn't have a lot of sweets. She didn't believe in sugary stuff. We never had like tricks or ugh. it was either she did relent at some point and buys honey nut Cheerios, which was, you know, um, so anyway, she has made these uh, these cookies for us or for, you know, uh, me ever since I was a kid and they're chocolate oatmeal drop cookies. And I asked her years ago, I said, hey, can you give me this recipe? And right. We started making them. We have been making them ever since. And they're kind of a family favorite. And. They say dad's the only one that's able to make it simple. That's just not true. I'm the one that ends up making them. I don't like to drop them from the, from the saucepan. We've all the tried. Parchment. We just can't do it. So anyway, so we were doing it last night and Madeline happened to be over. Who's Harrison's fiance. And they said, can you show her how you do this? And I said, of course. I'll well, show wait, her. the backstory to that was the one weekend they were over for Sunday dinner. They come over every Sunday for dinner. Right. And Harrison they, and they, um, we had said something, Harrison. How do we get on that topic about the chocolate oatmeal cookies? And you were like, I'm cooking something. something. And you were like, don't even try. Remember, isn't that what you said? You're like, don't even try to make a Madeline. It's just you're not going to be able to do it. And I was like, like, oh, like, don't say that. <laughs> it's like, thanks a lot. Like a vote of confidence. And I was like, you know, and so then we had laughed about it, and you know, that night or whatever. And so then last night. I was looking for something for dessert, and I was like, oh, we should just make the chocolate oatmeal cookies, and right. then we can ha- show Madeline how you do it. So then that's where we were doing last night was. The problem is that whenever she makes stuff, right, or whenever she gets to baking and she messes it up or doesn't bake it correctly, she gets very, very angry. And so when I told her, I said, listen, you can do these two, three, four times, honey, if you, do, if you mess up. It's okay. I was like, not many people can do it. Dad's, my dad's the only one that I've seen do it. It's okay if you mess up. She's like, well, I'm going to take that as a challenge and do it. And I'm like, I'm just telling you, if you, if you do it, great. That's a success. But if not, you, don't get mad. I will yeah. tell you, though, that it's, I, I, to this day, I told her, I was like, I still don't like how I do it sometimes. Yeah. I was like, they're too dry Did we take a picture or, of them last night? We didn't, did we? Take a picture of the cookies? They, they were a little too, and I just thought of this. It's so stupid. I don't think I put the, like eighth of a cup of hot water i think i missed something that might be why they were so there you go maybe there's all these little steps and you have to do them in order and then a particular time frame and then well the rolling boil that's the challenge the how long boil. do you let it be on a rolling boil i'm thinking closer to two rolling, minutes. rolling boil i know it's ridiculous <laughs> so they're neat uh, when you drop them they need to kind of spread and last night they didn't spread they're more like ice cream Oh. I was like, Dog on it. They were still glistening though, which means they're going to stick together. Well, my mom, when my mom used to make them, she would drop them, but that's m- maybe because we're dropping them with like an ice cream scooper. She's like we're just, dropping them. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time my mom made them, and she came and she goes, "Where's all the cookies?" I was like, "Ah, they're all gone." <laughs> I was such a jerk. <laughs> one time she bought uh, these thing called juicy juices or something like these little, like um, pops, you know, like uh, fruit pops, kind of like. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you, when you're a kid, you get them, and they have two, like, sticks, and you break them apart. Oh, yeah, yeah, They're yeah. Kind of like that, but smaller. Like popsicles? Yeah, popsicles. Okay. But they were, like, in a little thing, a little triangle thing, and you would rip off the top and then just squeeze it up. Oh, and, you know, so okay. They're called juicy juicers, I think. And she bought, like, two boxes, and I was staying with her that summer, and she came home, and she goes, where are all the juicy juicers? Because Jared and Jessica wanted one. I was like, ah, they're all gone. <laughs> I ate them all. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was a difficult kid when it came to that stuff. Oh, my god! Not a lot of impulse control. What was the one story about something being broken and then you, she came home and you're like, I don't know. You had broken something. Do you remember that? Oh, what was it? Oh, God. Was I young? I don't remember. I can't remember. Well, there was one time in my dad's car when I was learning how to drive and my dad... It was it was a two it was an eighty two two eighty ZX Nissan two eighty ZX and it had one of those uh, antennas they don't make them like this anymore but it would retract when you turn the radio off it would retract right and my buddy had jumped on I'd borrowed the car and I'd gone up to my friend's house or something and my buddy had jumped on the back bumper and was going up and down like jumping on the bumper and um, and the radio the, the antenna was was extended and I was being a moron you go get off the bumper so I just let out the clutch a little bit and pulled forward a little bit and he jumped off the back was he jumped off the back his arm caught the uh, thing <laughs> so I saw that it was like Wah. I was like oops <laughs> so what we did was I just kind of stuffed it back down. <laughs> so a few days later my dad comes and goes what happened you did I was like oh, no. <laughs> oh my god it's a wonder how is it is it fascinating that us as parents as parents people don't disown their children no what's hysterical is that i look at the boys i go i've done everything oh my god oh I've what, what were you laughing about the other day were your grades remember that and johnny goes johnny said something about oh yeah if i just keep it up i'm gonna have four a's at the end of this trimester and i said that's really good that's that you should you know be proud of that that's good you've learned right. your lesson first try so good job and he said, um, I don't know how we got on the top. So how Talk we got about the top changing of the, your grades. And then I said, he goes, oh, yeah, you go, well, it's better than changing your grades or something. I can't remember what made you say. I think we got on the topic of Holden. I was, I was like, Holden would say things. This is just a running joke. It didn't really happen. He was like, oh, I got all A's. Oh, yeah, I got, I got all A's. A's. Well, like, did you really? Uh, goes, well, okay, I got class. you know three A's and a B. And you go, did you really? really? Go, oh, okay, I got all B's and a C. And it goes down to like a 2.0. <laughs> I was like, how do you get from a 4 to a 2? Yeah, and you I, would say things like, well, if you take my B and round it to a B plus, and then take the A plus and round it down to an A minus, and then take the C plus and do the right. C. And like he would come up with all these good figures. Machinations to of, justify. Of stuff. And then it would be like, so that's it, right? Or he'd be like, so. So um, Halloween is next week, which is five days from today. But if you round, if you take today out of it, then and then you take to, into account that there's no track practice there. That's really only three days then until Halloween. <laughs> you're like, nah. Your logic train isn't like on the tracks. And so anyway, I, it's a joke about Holden. That, right. So that, I made the joke about it's, you know, yeah, it's something right. about it's better than trying to change your grades and take it from me. It doesn't work. <laughs> right. You said, oh, there was this one time you changed a grade from a. Let's just keep the official one time. Go ahead. Proceed. <laughs> And then I said, well, back in the day, we had report cards that They'd the teacher the you would take it. from teacher to teacher, and they would write your grade on it, like with a pen. Yeah. And you said that it was Spanish? No, what class was it? That was a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe three. Okay, I don't what, remember. Why did you change from an F to a B? Yeah. <laughs> or an A. I don't remember. I think what threw, <laughs> I think what threw them off was it. They go, real quick, no way King made an A in anything. <laughs> I think B's even a stretch, buddy. <laughs> you went to the teacher and you, they said, uh, well, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you the true story? What happened? <laughs> And so anyway. Johnny was like, John, yes, you can tell that story. But anyway, Johnny was like, Dad, I don't get it. I'm cut from the same cloth or something like that. Yeah. I had the same genetic pool. What, you know, um, and then he was talking about oh, so an excuse for bad grades. Yes. So and what happened was I was in 10th grade. My grades one one six weeks were terrible. And I changed the grades and had my dad sign it and turned it back in. <laughs> and my homeroom teacher's name was Mr. Ledford. He, I mean, he was going through and he looked at it. I'll never forget watching him. He was looking at me. <laughs> and he gets up and walks to the Spanish teacher. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> True story. Oh to think that that was how they did grades. <laughs> Boy, it's hilarious. I got in trouble. Oh, I bet you did. Oh my god. They made it a point to go back and make sure that the grades that I was that I actually earned were re yes. reflected. Yeah. So, yeah. Cuz he didn't was, work. Yeah, and Johnny was talking about something about the genetics um and why didn't you give me the basketball gene or something? And that's how we got onto that whole conversation, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was a slam dad session we had that on the way to five. We were laughing so hard. He goes, what letters did you grow? What what sports did you letter in, Dad? Oh, God. You can't break sub twenty. I was like, listen, dude. When we were in cross country, we were just trying to finish. <laughs> there was four of us. Come on.
Uh, I, think, I, think, I honestly think the coach would sit there and give us our singlets and shorts when we get to the meet and then ask for them back after the meet. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, it was just it was dumb. I think it, actually it's a true story. I borrowed some running shoes from my buddy to run cross country. They were his shoes. They weren't mine. I mean, we didn't have our high school was pretty small, so we didn't have um, I think that was the first year of cross country it was yeah. 80, uh fall of 88. So, yeah. Anyway, That's funny. Oh my god. Very funny. I had long enough hair though. It was great. Tennessee's hilly, so going down hills is easy. I would just <laughs> try and catch a little bit of back wind, oh, float down. Goodness. Yeah. So Johnny was in rare form yesterday. Yeah. In the car. So yeah. That's anyway. Pretty funny. Interesting times. Back then, you could do that. You could change those grades. Not so much anymore. Everything's electronic. Yeah. The paperwork back then must have been unbelievable. Can you imagine? Yeah. So. I, feel, I feel like we've had a lot of good like pickup stories from sleepovers for the King Boys. Uh, oh yes. Oh, I, do you we remember the tooth, the tooth story you had from the sleepover? <laughs> yep. Where you hit your tooth on a bottle? No, he didn't hit his tooth. Someone jammed a, a bottle. He kept. Oh, call- that's right. No, he called and he goes, "I need to tell you something." I was like, "What is it?" I can't tell you. I was like, well, <laughs> "What is it?" Well, I can't. I want you. I want to tell you in person. I was like, "Okay, what did you do? Did you wreck a car? What did you do?" So I and I, this is. They were like. 14 yeah and you spent the night at some uh, nick nick's house i think nick connor's house right and um they were they had cokes i mean you know coca-colas used to come in um they still do come in glass bottles and harrison had had his teeth just shut his braces off i think or something yeah because he didn't have braces on when this happened and he gets in the car and he shows me i was like oh my word like his front tooth was like yeah hacked off the front you know corner of his tooth so we had to get it fixed and then it came off again didn't it come off again you're we walking around all day like pulling a steve-o or something so okay, it came off came off when i was dating this new girl and i felt very embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> so, oh gosh so yeah. yeah there's always something that so we have a few comments here hold on uh yeah. lisa sitting there said oh my gosh what's the recipe can't be that difficult <laughs> it's not we're just terrible at it <laughs> I, I took a picture. That's why I asked Richie. I was like, what's the – I took a picture of the recipe. I know what it is. It's two cups of sugar. And I did not – I was going to post it because it's laughable because it's handwritten. It's got notes next to it because – No, I know what it is. It's two cups of sugar. It is um, a third a cup of cocoa, a half a cup of milk. You stir all that up. Once that's stirred up, you put a full stick of butter in it, and you melt the butter down, and then you bring it to a rolling boil for two minutes, and then you throw in three tablespoons of butter and three cups of oats. And then you drop them. That's it. But the rolling boil, you got that down to a timed. Well, my mom said three to four minutes, and we did it the first time, and it was like dust. You couldn't, you know. Yeah. It was, you couldn't. I was like, three or four minutes is way too long. So um, the rolling boil is it. And I was telling Madeline last night, I was like, the rolling, the definition of rolling boil is the issue. When does it start a rolling boil? Is it when it's, as it works towards the center, and everything's rolling boil, or just when it starts to roll the boil on the outside? I do not know the answer to that. And if you don't do it enough, they're too, they don't, they don't get, they don't solidify. They don't solidify. So, um, so yeah, that's like candy. That's what I was yeah. thinking. We need to use that candy thermometer, and then when it reaches oh, a particular point. thermometer, like temperature, right? And then that you, you know that that's when you do the rest of the stuff. But right. we haven't done that yet. Well, we do have one though. I know, but we just haven't done it. Yeah. So that's pro- that's you're probably right. That's probably the way to do it. So, <laughs> Lisa's gonna make them <laughs> first no, time. Boom. Lori Mac is while listening to this recipe. This is her reaction. Hold on. <laughs> That's Harrison. There you go. It's close. Oh, gosh. Harrison, when he tried to make the cookies. <laughs> right. Oh, God. That's hilarious. That's great. We have a comment from Tina saying, you both are making me laugh out loud this morning. Oh, good. All right. I'm glad we're making you laugh, T. Oh, dear Lord. And then Lori said again, we miss you guys. Best neighbors ever. You're so right. nice. I miss you too. Gosh, those freaking the Bacchus parties! Of the Good Bacuses. lord, the stories we had with the Bacchuses. The dead rodents and golf bags and <laughs> naked the party, kids and the, the party pantries. bus. The party bus. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so many good memories. It's great. Um. So, yep. anything else that you wanted to cover this week <coughs> in the podcast? One of the things we should cover, Harrison, is the. The Facebook moving. No, we shouldn't because that hasn't been announced yet. No, we shouldn't. Okay. Okay. Scratch that. 
we have lots of good things coming, I guess, is the point of that. So, yeah, we've um, got, well, actually, we do have some, we can talk about some things. I mean, we've got some changes to the set we're going to be making, I think. We've been talking about it for the new year. Yep. Set up um, some new, um, some audio equipment we're, we're implementing that we've bought but have not yet installed that should uh, make the audio quality a bit better. So, it, isn't it funny? I've talked to Harrison about this. It, the more you do things like this and the more you, the more you start to pay attention to the small things. Yeah. Like, sure. you know, I'll listen to podcasts now. I go, dude, just get a better mic. I mean, these aren't that expensive. Right. I mean, make it a little bit easier to listen to. It's hard now with Zoom and stuff. I mean, you're, I mean, it was probably pre-COVID. I would think about that more often. Right. Now, I mean, with Zoom, you're, you're limited because you're using a platform you don't control. Um, but even though with websites, too, and Harrison probably thinks this, too. I'll go to people's web, people or podcasts that I listen to that have been around for 12 years. And I'm like, your website looks the exact same as it did in 2008. You need to update this. Right. You do something um, to keep things current sure yeah so good god what is that oh that's yeah that's that's funny because you do when you do things oh I'm, look at that i'm there looking at yeah the, you know what it looked like before Dude. good god miss molly that's that horrible that's a terrible shot <laughs> you're just blending into the wood <laughs> yeah pretty much the wide shot oh gosh you know blending in the wood i wouldn't have thought that <laughs> thanks a lot kid appreciate it Dad might as well be classified as a plank. plank oh, of wood. Greg myself. No, but that's for reference. That's what the podcast used to look like. That's, that's what. Happened. That's right after and Harrison and Madeline. In fact, that's right after. Magic. That was last, August of nineteen because we just gotten back from my class reunion. Yep. My fifteenth class reunion it was great. Fifteenth. Get out of <laughs> Dodge. Oh, Fifteen dear times Lord. two. Lord. Um, yeah. So. So yeah, that's good. It's cool that you know. That's that's actually one of the you know. More broadly, I think that's uh, w one of the more interesting aspects to doing things like this is you you constantly evolve. You're constantly looking for better ways to do things um, through feedback or just your own. You know, you'll see things that you like and then trying to implement um, it here or whatever. So, and not just the podcast. I mean, the business too. I'll see I'll have consumer experiences out that I either dislike or more often that that I like, and I'll go, "How I really like how this." this uh, went down what can i do is there anything right. i can take from this right implement somewhere else because um yeah that's what i think very few ideas you come with your you know on your own it's a lot of um seeing things and um emulating it to fit your own yeah no i kind agree of model so absolutely so i think it's i think actually that's going to become more and more important going forward is as people are more and more connected gary vanderchuk wrote a book years ago called um the thank you economy and he said social media and it's he, he he drew the analogy he said years ago in small communities you knew if there was a butcher shop two competing butcher shops one was almost always better than the other and people knew who was better mm -hmm. because they talked i mean it was a small community mm -hmm. and he said and what social media and the internet's done is taken people who were far apart and brought them together mm -hmm. so now you have you know, someone I'd never speak to, I can now hear from. Right. So um, your brand and the, your service delivery experience, um, it's not just confined to people that you're face to face with. It's it's everybody. Right. And how you can um, how you need to make your model so that it's reflective of that because people talk. And I guess his broader point was that it lets people talk more broadly versus face to face. I mean, someone puts a Yelp review. If I see ten Yelp reviews that all say the same thing, I'm like, okay, maybe this is an issue. Maybe right. I don't want to go there. Right. Whereas I would never know that until I went there and experienced it myself. Right. So, so Amazon, it's just the Amazonification of everything. Right. You always gravitate to those people that those you know. If you see a two compete two products, one has five thousand reviews and it's almost five stars, and one that has twenty reviews and it's four stars, you're going to gravitate because there's power in numbers. I mean, in that right. collective kind of consciousness of, of um their perception of the product service whatever yeah absolutely so <clears throat> oh thanks oh, thanks we sure try yeah my goodness it's been a challenge but we sure, sure do try thanks for that. that it's been a lot of fun um okay so wrapping it up there for the week mm -hmm. and um i hope everybody has a great week coming up yep and if you're someplace warm like tina i hope you're enjoying your son because Pray I wish us. I had it. It's January. Pray for us. <laughs> the sun. Uh, we would. We Pray would. For us. We'd yeah. love to. We'd love to look at the sun, but it just simply doesn't exist right uh, now. Yeah, I just don't know where it's been. But we're whatever. looking out your side. I was like, is the sun ever coming back out? It's yeah. been days. It's been days. So everybody, make sure you get outside, get some fresh weather, some vitamin D. 
vitamin D when the next time it comes out. <laughs> yeah, whenever you can. <laughs> um, and don't forget, you can check us out most Mondays mm-hmm. around 11 or so. Yep. Um, on, or you can listen on any of the podcast channels. And lastly, don't forget the merch store, ASPCMerch.com. We will outfit you head to toe. All right. I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. And we'll see you next time. Harrison back there behind the board. And we'll see you next time on Five Boys in a Business. We're out. <laughs>